we're going to be working principally with a function g. We know that it's differentiable on the closed interval, negative 7 to 5. We know its value at a point, that g of 0 is 5. And then most importantly, we know that the graph shown is not g, but g prime of x. So addressing questions is clearly going to require a thorough understanding of the fundamental theorem of calculus and the definition and application of points of inflection, critical points, how do I identify them and how to classify them. So with that, let's begin. In part A, we're asked to find both g of 3 and g of negative 2. Well, the fundamental theorem tells us if we would like to know the value of a function at a particular point, it equals the value of the function at some known point, in this case g of 0, plus the integral from the known point to the point that you want of the derivative of the function. That's the fundamental theorem. Well, the good news is we know at g of 0, this is 5. Now, what about this integral? Well, from 0 to 2, we're talking about the signed area under the g prime function. And this is 1 quarter of a circle. The circle that they give us has a radius of 2, so its area is pi times 2 squared, or 4 pi. One quarter of that has an area of pi. Now from 2 to 3, we're working with a triangle. 1 half the base times the height gives us the area, so that's 1 half 1 times 3. That's 3 halves. And so, g3 equals 5 plus 3 halves, which is 10 halves plus 3 halves, 13 halves plus pi. g of negative 2 works similarly. It's g at the place that we know plus the integral from 0 to negative 2 of g prime of x dx, which is just the signed area under the g prime curve. g of 0, of course, is still 5, but we are traversing this interval from 0 down to negative 2, and so signed areas are reversed. It's the same amount of area. It's the one quarter of a circle whose area is 4 pi. So we know that this is pi, but because we're integrating backwards, it's negative pi. So our final answer for this, 5 minus pi. Part B asks us about points of inflection. That's where the second derivative of the function in question changes sign. Well, the first derivative of the function is this graph, meaning the height, the, the y. The second derivative, therefore, is the local slope. Okay. So let's reiterate what we know about points of inflection as part of our explanation. Okay, namely, points of inflection occur where uh, g double prime of x changes sign. Which in this case is a slope 
changing sign. So all we have to do is determine where the slope changes sign. Well, from negative 7 to negative 2, the slope is positive. In fact, the slope continues to be positive from negative 2 to 0. It's not until we get to 0 that the slope changes sign. Now the slope is negative, and at 2 it changes to positive. So there's another value. Now the slope's positive, and at 3 it changes to negative. So we have three places, three x values. Okay, at x equals 0. The slope changes sign. At x equals 2, the slope changes sign. And at x equals 3, the slope changes sign. Part C. We're given a new function based on the earlier function, h of x. It's defined to be g of x minus 1 half x squared. And now they ask us about finding critical points. So critical points occur not at the endpoints but in the open interval wherever the function in question equals zero or doesn't exist. So we'll reiterate that. Critical points occur where h prime of x equals zero or alternatively where it doesn't exist. So we need to calculate h prime of x. That's going to be g prime of x minus x. Okay, first of all, this function exists everywhere, this function h prime of x. Okay. It exists over the interval. It exists everywhere. So we don't have to worry about the does not exist part. So now we have to say, so where is g prime of x minus x equal to 0? Well, it's time to do some thinking. Let's look at different regions of this graph. We want the height of this graph to equal the x-coordinate. For x less than 0, the x-coordinate is obviously negative, and the smallest that the height gets is negative 1. But by the time the height gets to negative 1, the x-coordinate is negative 7. And so we can see that for this whole interval for x less than 0, there is no solution. What about for x from 0 to 2, where we have this circular function? Well, the y goes from 2 down to 0. The x goes from 0 up to 2. So there's got to be a point of intersection there. I'm just going to partition this off. Okay. For x from 0 to 2, uh, by the IVT,
there is a point of intersection. Question is, where is it? Well, how do we describe this curve from 0 to 2? Okay. We're going to write the curve as uh, the square root of 4 minus x squared. So we're really asking, therefore, we have square root of 4 minus x squared equals x. Or in other words, thus, where does 4 minus x squared equal x squared? Or where does 4 equal 2x squared? That's at x equals the square root of 2. Okay. Again, we don't include the negative root because that's not in the region of interest. Okay. Finally, for um, x in the interval 2 to 5, we have this linear graph. Okay. And so the height rises steeply from 0 up to 3, while x is rising more gradually from 0 up to 3. Okay. So we have actually only one place where h of x equals x at x equals 3. I'm sorry, where g prime of x. g prime of x equals x is at x equals 3. So the uh, question is, for each of these points, do we have a local max, a local min, or no change in sign at all? Okay. For x equals root 2, well, again, the h prime of x is or rather, uh, g prime of x is decreasing, x is increasing, so we have this uh, change of sign right at this root 2 point. We can see how g prime of x is decreasing. It, so the difference goes from being above to below. Okay, We're going to say that left to right, um, it goes from plus to minus. For x equals 3, left to right, okay, left to right plus to minus, therefore we've got a local max. For x equals 3 left to right, we see that um, this is the highest the g prime of x ever gets. And so, in fact, g prime of x minus x stays either negative or zero through the whole interval from two, be, 2 and on. And so there is no change of sign. There's no change, and therefore it's neither. Now, this reasoning is a little bit um, abstract, and I have to admit that I didn't see a simpler way to do this until after the first time I'd seen the problem. But basically what we're saying is, when does this curve intersect the line y equals x? Because that's when the height equals the x-coordinate. And so we could have done this more simply, simply by drawing this uh, line. Okay and seeing that that's a critical point and that's a critical point because this line intersects the graph. This line obviously is not going to intersect the graph uh, anywhere to the left and so that makes it a little bit easier to locate those critical points and to determine 
whether they're local maxes, local mins, or neither.